Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be learning about how to code in an expense tracker in Python. Now expense tracker is not only useful for practicing your coding skills, but it's also useful just in general to you know track where your money's going. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. So what we need to do first is go ahead and create a brand new Python project. So we're gonna call this expense tracker. All right guys, now that we are loaded into our environment, the very first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create a main method here. So if double underscore name is equal to, then in quotes, double underscore main, double underscore, then we can put a colon here. And let's think about the layout of our program. So an expense tracker, you need a way to list all the expenses you've um, put in there. You need a way to add expenses and remove expenses. And then you just need a way that like, this is all contained in some sort of loop that way, um, you know, I could keep adding stuff or moving stuff, doing whatever. It's a fluent program. So with that being said, I think that I'm going to have four different methods. We're going to have a list expenses, add expenses, remove expenses, and then a print menu option. Let's just go ahead and start laying out our program. And um, I guess before we even get to the main method, we could start writing some of our other functions. And I think the easiest one to start with would be the um, print menu function. And that's because when the program starts, they're going to need to know what their options are, and we need to print that to them to let them know. So what I'm thinking here is we're first going to print and then we're going to say, please choose from one of the following options with a couple of dots. And we're going to just have three different options. Like I said, we're going to first have a add a new expense. Then we're gonna have another print line here, remove an expense. And then our third and final line here is going to be three list all expenses. So that completes it for our print menu uh, function here. And let's move on to the add expenses function. Now, before we create our add expenses function, I think we need to actually initialize the thing that we're going to add to. So let's just go ahead and create an empty array up here called expenses, and we're just going to have empty brackets. And then we can define our function, so add expense. And it's going to take two different parameters. I'm thinking a uh, dollar amount and a category that that expense belongs to. So whenever they pass in two parameters and call this function, the first thing we need to do is create a temporary object that we would like to um, you know, store these variables in. So we're gonna just say expense is equal to, and then open up brackets here. And since this expense array here is going to hold both the amount and the category for each uh, entry, that we're basically going to going to have an array full of objects. And this is our object here, and we need to put two different fields in it. The first one of those being the amount field, and then a colon, and then the variable we'd like to insert, which is amount, and then comma, and then we're going to have category, colon, and then category is our variable that we are inserting there. All right, guys, and so now that we have our temporary expense variable, all we need to do is simply add it to the array. So we call our array expenses dot append, and then just say expense. All right, guys, our next function is going to be called list expenses. So let's break this out here. It's not gonna take any parameters. And this is going to be very simple. We just need to loop through the array and then kind of print out in a nice format what we have entered in there so far. And guys, I just realized I spelled this wrong, so let's remove this E here. So I think first off, it would be nice to just say, you know, a new line and then say, here is a list of your expenses, with a couple of dots. And then going alongside that print line, I think it'd be nice to just have sort of this uh, separator here, equivalent to the length of the statement above. We just need a couple more dash lines here. All right, guys, and now that we've done that, we're just going to initialize a counter variable because uh, eventually we need to write our remove function and each index in the array needs to have, you know, a, a number that this person can reference, the user, and we're gonna use this counter variable to do that. So now that we have that out of the way, we're gonna say for expense in expenses. Now we're just gonna simply print it out. First, we're going to print the number. So we're gonna do a hashtag or like a pound symbol then a comma, and then the counter variable, and then a comma, quotes again. And then we're going to do space dash space. So now we just imagine we have like, you know, this symbol here, number one dash, and what's the number one? Now we need to say the amount and then the category. 
So after this second set of quotes here, we're going to do a comma again. And then we're going to say expense, which is the current item that we're on. And then we're going to reference the amount field that's in there. And then after that, we're going to put another comma and then a space, quotes again, space dash space, comma again. And then finally expense. And then instead of the amount, we're going to reference the category. So guys, I know that was a lot to take in uh, all in one line, but basically we're saying, hey, like, let's say this is the first index in the array and we just have some arbitrary thing in there. Let's say, okay, so number index zero in the array is going to be, I don't know, $2 in the category is, I don't know, uh, food, right? So we'll just print out each line like that. And we also need to increment our counter variable. So just do plus equals one here. And then I think it'd also be nice is outside of the loop. So make sure you click enter and then backspace. We're going to print one final line and it's just going to be a double line break here. That way that um, once this is inside of the infinite loop and you know they're moving through the program, everything has its own like uh, spacing in between stuff. All right, guys, we have knocked out three out of the four of our functions here. So let's define the last one. It's going to be called remove expense. It's not going to take any parameters. And basically what we're going to say is while true, so it's going to be a loop in case um, the user enters something invalid or in case uh, some other error happens. And I think the first thing to do is we need to list the expenses that are available to be deleted. So luckily for us, we already wrote out a function for that. So let's go ahead and reference that. And then after doing that, let's go ahead and print what expense would you like to remove with a question mark. Here comes the fun part. We need to gather user input because we've now asked them a question. So I think what we're gonna do is put this inside of a try and accept block in case anything happens in terms of user input or failure to cast whatever their input is to a um, integer. So inside of this try, we're going to say expense to remove is equal to input and then just a caret symbol and a space and then what we're going to do is cast this entire thing inside of an int because ultimately we're going to list out these expenses. They're going to be a numbered list and then the user might enter, you know, five, for example. Um, but five is a string when it comes back from this input function. So we need to then cast it to an int to make sure that we can use it while um, trying to delete from this array. And because we now have it inside of a try and accept, any sort of incorrect anything would automatically fire inside of this accept block. So we know that we are safe to perform the deletion on the very next line. So you're gonna say DEL or short for delete. Then you're gonna reference the thing that you want to delete, which in our case is going to be the expenses array at the index of expense to remove. And then in case that they fire off in the success block, we're just going to say, you know, invalid input, please try again. And that will wrap up our function. So guys, we are at like the 80% mark now. Let's just um, initialize some basic um, items inside this expenses array. That way when we uh, run our program, we can kind of test it. And uh, after that, we can just finish off our main function. Okay, right, so right under this expenses array declaration here, we're just going to say, you know, expense one, for example, is equal to, and then we're gonna say the amount and then the value, I don't know. We, we spent $51 on, and then, you know, the category, the thing that we spent $51 on, I don't know, uh, a shirt, which would be expensive shirt, but you know, sometimes it happens. So expenses.append. Now we want to add this brand new expense into our expenses array. So just expenses.append and then the expense one that we just made. And that way, when we run our program, we at least have one thing in there. And let's just take it a step further. Let's copy this again, change it to expense two for these two, and then let's just change the dollar value. So I don't know, we spent $51 on that one thing, and then we spent, I don't know, 21, 55 on, let's say groceries, for example. And I definitely spelled that wrong, groceries. There we go. All right, guys, we are so close to being done. Now that we have our uh, initial couple of items in there, and we have all of our functions written, now we just need to put them to use. So down here in our main method that we created earlier, let's go ahead and start coding. So like I mentioned, um, this is going to be inside of a um, kind of an infinite loop. So what we need to do is just say while true. And the first thing we need to do upon launching the program is go ahead and prompt the user. And how we're gonna do that is go ahead and print the menu. So we need to give them options that they can choose from. So we're just gonna call our print menu function. 
And then we're just going to simply prompt them for a response to that because the print menu function gives them options, but we need to now gather input from them. So the option selected is going to be equal to input and then kind of like this little console caret that I've used in other videos here. It's just a nice little way to um, kind of tell them that they need to enter something. So guys, if our option selected is equal to one, if we go up to our menu, we'll notice that one is, is the add a new expense option, which means we will need to use this add expense function that we wrote earlier and it takes in an amount in a category. Now, this does not handle the uh, user input itself, so we need to do it and then insert it into this function. So I think the first question would be to um, ask them how much the expense was. So how much was this expense with a question mark? And now that we've asked them a question, we need to gather input from them. And I think we are going to need a user validation loop for that. So the first thing would be the, um, I don't know, the amount to add, because we're prompting for an amount. And actually before that, let's just wrap this in a try and accept block in case any sort of thing happens with input. So the amount to add is going to be equal to just input with this little caret symbol and a space. And then assuming that they entered it correctly and there's nothing wrong, no errors or anything, we could just break right out of there and then move on to our next question. So our next question is going to be, what category was this expense with a question mark? And now we can have another user validation loop here with another try and accept block. And what we're going to do is the category that it's equal to is going to be, you know, equal to whatever the user enters here. Assuming that there are no errors, we can go ahead and just click break or type in break, sorry. And uh, yeah, the only things left to do is to fill in these accept blocks with just a simple output, um, you know, saying that there's an error. So we can copy what we had up here, which is invalid input. Please try again. Let's go ahead and paste that here. Um, line 49 here and then put it right here again in this other accept block and then go ahead and click enter just to give yourself some more space in between these two uh, user validation loops and guys now that we know that we have validated and usable variables here like category and amount to add all we need to do is actually put them to use so we're going to go, go ahead and call our function so add expense our first parameter is the amount so we're going to say the amount to add and then our second parameter is the category, which we also have stored here. So that will complete our option one. So options two and three are going to be way easier. So we're going to have an else if here. The option selected is equal to two. Well, if we go up to our print menu function, two is removing an expense. And that actually does handle all the input and validation for us. So all we need to do is simply just call that function. So let's copy this. And then go down here to the else if, click enter, paste, and then we can move on to the next one. So if the option selected is equal to three, that is our final one, which is the list expense function. And then we could put this last else here. And this is in case they enter whatever else besides one, two, or three. And then just like before, we could just say invalid input, please try again, and just paste that there. All right, guys, I know that was pretty quick and that was a lot of uh, work there, but we are now ready to launch our program and see if it actually works as expected. So I go ahead and click run here. First, it's going to say, please choose from one of the following options. Well, first, let's check that our initialized, like those two expenses that we added right at the beginning. Let's make sure those are in there. So let's click three and you'll notice it prints out a list of the current expenses, which those do look like the ones we want. We know our indexer is working because we have um, increasing numbers. It looks nice and formatted good, and that's awesome. So we know that our function three list all expenses is working, and we know that the ones we added at the beginning is also working. So let's put the other functions to the test, and let's first try to add something. So let's click number one here. How much was this expense? I don't know. It was $71.43. And what category was this in? This was in the, uh, let's say it was entertainment. So we click enter. And now if we click number three, we should see that brand new expense in there. So let's do three. And you'll notice that right here at index number two, our um, expense that we just entered in is in there, which is awesome. And now let's go ahead and try to remove this. So let's click two. And now it's saying, okay, you know, which one would you like to remove? And it gives us the list again. Uh, I want to remove number two, which is the one that we just added. So let's click two. 
and it prints it out again and you'll notice um, it actually keeps prompting us. So what we need to do is once we click enter, instead of um, getting stuck in this loop, let's go ahead and break out of it. So let's just make one quick logic change. Let's go up to the remove expense uh, function here. And right under this delete expenses, we need to break out of this loop. So go ahead and click break. Stop this, run it again. And yeah, let's go to th uh, three. So we have these two initial items. Let's test number two again. And we want to remove uh, the index number zero. So let's do that. And let's list them again. And you notice that it successfully removed the shirt that was at number zero. And now all that's left is groceries. So guys, that's going to complete our tutorial. As you see, everything's working awesomely. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for this video or the next video. I'd be happy to hear it. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.